Hello, and uh, welcome to our inaugural podcast, I guess it would be, right? We're so excited you're here. So this is Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers, a podcast from Antidote 71, a marketing agency in the middle of the country. And I'm Rich Mackey, one of your hosts. I am Caitlin Dre, your other host. Caitlin is all of the personality and color commentary, <laughs> and I am all of the brain dump and weird facts. All of the expertise comes from Rich, all of the inane questions and unbridled enthusiasm and curiosity comes from me. So I guess we should talk about like what this podcast is. What right? are we? What are we even doing here? I honestly don't know some days. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess there's not really a set agenda or topic for um, the series. It's really more whatever we want to make it, right? right? Yeah. I think we do our best work when we're kind of allowed to uh, fly free and pull on interesting loose threads as we find them. Yeah. So basically, I think we're going to have a conversation today. It'll just be us. We'll introduce you to the podcast and you're going to be along for that ride. And then other episodes will have guests who come in and kind of share their expertise, mm-hmm. because if it was just us, you might get sick of it or yeah. you might really, really love it. Or we might get sick of it <laughs> or really, really love it. Who knows? So this I think podcast is our oyster right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready. It is. So I think um, let's get into why cocktails, tangents, and answers. Why indeed. So let's start with cocktails. It is the first word, obviously. Yeah, I think it's first because it sets the stage. It's not necessarily the most important, but it is the most fun part of what we're going to do, at least in the name. Yeah, so hopefully that tells you that this is going to be a little bit loose podcast. Uh, There are cocktails happening. Um, And, you know, we'll also just share recipes. We'll share our ideas about cocktails. You know, there might be something I love and Caitlin hates. I think one thing that's really important to know about us as people and also Antidote 71 as an agency is that we are exceptionally motivated by food and beverage. And so it was important for us to be authentic to that. And it was also important for us to be able to share our expertise in the realm of cocktails because it is it is wide ranging and it is uh, we have we hold very strong viewpoints. We absolutely do. Um, And we hold individually strong viewpoints Mm -hmm. throughout the agency. So we're about 13 people right now. We'll grow. We'll shrink. Who knows? Uh, But um, some people love very basic drinks, like uh, a nice beer, maybe a Bud Light. Others like things a little bit more complicated that might need to be crafted by a uh, bartender. Well, and it's always, it's like the easiest way to get to know somebody is over a beverage because it's such an easy gateway into, tell me about why you like that or the best thing you ever had or... What is it about Bud Light that you just can't get enough of? I thought the easiest way to get to know somebody for you was to grill them about their food habits on their first day of work. But I am the exception and not the rule. (laughs) We do. I mean, that said, we do. One of our interview questions is like, what's your favorite restaurant locally? Mm -hmm. Um, If you could make any dish, what would you make? We don't really ask the cocktail questions, I guess, in interviews. We could. Um, I think it might be an interesting jumping off point. We do have, a, right now we have a pretty young staff, so it might be interesting to see what the what the youths are drinking <laughs> post-college. I feel like I just have old man drinks. I know, I know. I was like, I don't really want to revisit any of those choices for me. Like a cooler full of red and then like whatever was left on the shelf that no one wants to drink that. I did... Um... In college, I had a oh gosh, it was orange juice and raspberry no. liqueur, <laughs> and I put them together, and it tasted like um, like a li- like a lifesaver. But then I did that once, and I had so much of it, I got sick, and then I never drank it again. Yeah, which was probably a really good. One. I've only just recently been able to revisit tequila. Wow. So, yeah, probably within like the last five years. Wow, that is going to be a story for another time. That actually kind of gets us to the second point, (laughs) because I just did one right there with the college story and the alcohol. Uh, It's to the tangents. So um, we will take you on a story journey. We know where point A is and we know where point B is. 
We just didn't tell you that there's 624 points in between there. They're and also, all very fun and interesting. Offshoots, like left and right. So the tangents are going to happen. Um, we don't plan them. We don't write them. We don't decide what to tangent to go off on in an episode. It's just a word is sparked and we'll go down it. And we'll try to come back around to our topic for you. We just want to see what happens. But yeah, it's just really that that discovery and that, um, I don't know, that journey, I guess, mm -hmm. that we're always on. And we do that in the office. Um, somebody will find something online. They'll share it in our chat tool. And then we will all be down this rabbit hole of, I believe, uh, one of the recent ones was uh, bear outfits for children. Yes. And then we got into tie-dye bear outfits because producer Zach, who's sitting outside, uh, has a lot of tie-dye shirts. And if he has a baby that has to get a bear outfit, which he does, you have to. Yeah, it's a it's I didn't know that when I became a parent, but you have to own at least one article of clothing with ears, ears. Mm -hmm. in the first six months of your child's life. It's then, like an unspoken, unwritten rule. Yeah, and I'm disappointed that the adults don't have bear onesies. That link you sent was horrifying. Which we and I will had. never. It was terrible. <laughs> that the woman in that weird tie dye. One onesie. of the suggested activities for the onesie bear onesie was grocery shopping. Like a grown adult was going to wear that costume into a grocery store. I mean, I feel like all rules are have been off the last couple of years. Right, on going out of the house and grocery shopping. That was the first problem for me was like entering the grocery store as a parent of a small person. I will only ever drive to the parking lot and have somebody else put my groceries in the car. Now that drive up grocery shopping has changed my world as a grown adult with no children, <laughs> but who really doesn't like interacting with strangers. I am 100 percent with you on that. If I can get the free delivery and have them bring it to my house, mm -hmm. like when I lived in Chicago way, way back early 2000s, Peapod was a thing. And it was a company that their whole thing was delivering groceries to you. And they were trialing it in Chicago. They were just too early. They were. They were way too early, but <laughs> I loved market it. too early. I lived on the second floor. They would carry everything oh up. Oh, my gosh. They would set it on your counter in the kitchen. So it's rich as a 30-year-old, hip, young guy in Chicago, and then all of the grannies who maybe know how to use the internet having their groceries right. delivered. Right. I'm in a third-floor walk-up, and I can't carry my <laughs> half gallon of milk. My grandson ordered these for me. I hope he did it right. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And now I'm like aging toward the grandparent uh but with no it's children very, no grandkids very hip and i try to yeah. be um so again more <laughs> tangents so hopefully you've got the tangent Do you idea. get the idea um we're going to jump in a little bit and pull back to kind of our notes uh and tell you a little bit about us so you know why should you listen to us aside from we're fascinating and wonderful and you'll get booze stories and <laughs> recipes um we do know a bit about marketing uh, we know a bit about uh design and those things and more importantly our staff and the people we'll bring in as guests will be experts to go deep into specific areas of marketing that's where the real magic is gonna happen for sure yeah, so I have been doing marketing for longer than I care to admit. Um, I thought it was really cool when it was like 20 years that I've been doing marketing. I'm like, that's a really great number. And now the number just keeps getting bigger. That's um, better than the alternative. It is. It is. I guess the alternative is <laughs> stopping in death. It's much better to be continuing to grow old than yeah. done. <laughs> But I um, I started my career in Sioux City, Iowa, where we, we actually have an office there, as well as Omaha, Nebraska, uh, at a small agency, worked there for a few years, uh, came to Omaha. I sold TV ads. So shout out to anybody who remembers me from my KPTM days back in Omaha in the 90s. I uh, realized after one year that I just really hated cold calling and oh, hated what a nightmare. door to door sales. Oh, yeah. Just go oh, into cool. like. I have hives. I have hives. Like my job was to go into like a hair salon and find the owner and be like, hey, would you like to advertise on TV? Here's some packages. Uh, and the sad thing is I was really good at it and I made good money, but I was just like sick every day. Sad and horrible. I'm not Sales wired for that. Sales are, oh, Ugh. nope. So I jumped back into advertising with an agency here uh, in Omaha and then made the big break, went to Chicago at a little agency. You may Where have you had of. all your groceries delivered. I did have my groceries <laughs> delivered there, yes. So a little agency called Ogilvy and Mather uh, and worked there for a few years. Um, in the early 2000s, as everything was like spiraling downward in the ad industry and <laughs> layoffs and things. Um, 
I learned that it's not great to be the one left after everybody else has been laid off because they just pile more work on you. Okay. So I bolted, went to another agency um, in Chicago and worked on Propel Fitness Water, which was a Gatorade brand in the early days, uh, a wireless company, and then did went client side marketing there at the wireless company and then did marketing for a financial firm. And then in 2016, bought into this little agency called Antidote 71. This little and, dream, uh, the little engine that could. I know. And so here I'm the uh, the fearless leader or the benevolent dictator, however you want to want to call it those. Um, well, I mean, if you're the benevolent dictator, I think you decide what the title is. See, there's the problem. <laughs> I'm so benevolent. I let you others can't decide even my choose. title. I don't know. I just am a giver. So that's a little about me. I've got a lot of traditional advertising background. I jumped into digital at Ogilvy really early on in the early 2000s. Like there was no Facebook. Um, I don't think there was a Twitter. I should know that because I teach a class on it. Wasn't Facebook first? Um, No, LinkedIn was first, actually. Well, yeah. But yeah. LinkedIn is like the younger sister of the two of them, right? I know. Like, no offense, LinkedIn, but (laughs) sorry. Um, So did some of the, like, banner ads were really popular. It was like Mm -hmm. the only thing we had. Google was kind of coming up. So did some of that at Ogilvy One um, for a few brands um, and then just really loved it. So as I got into, like... The work I did at Cricket Wireless, like, got us onto Facebook. Business pages had just come out. And we're like, oh, we should do this. And we did. And, like, dove into that and got into all that digital stuff. And that's kind of where my career has shifted, Mm -hmm. like, since. And I've been really good at shifting companies from old school analog to digital. Yeah. And like um, at OPL, we dumped all of the paper marketing that we did. No direct mail anymore by the time, you know, five years went by. Yeah. It was fascinating. And so here we really help clients activate with that. Um, So I know a lot about, I know a little about a lot and a lot about a few areas of it, (laughs) but we fill out the team with other people. So that's like a really long ramble about me. Um, So what about you, Caitlin? Like, I know your background, but tell all these people. I know I'm feeling the pressure to like... Button this just be up different for you. like don't don't ramble as much as I, oh ramble. my god it's so hard yeah i one thing that you should know about me is that i really hate talking about myself i would so much rather like get to the really like meaty parts of other people of like what makes you tick and what's exciting to you but throughout my very wide ranging professional life I have done everything from mortgage loan processing to water bill payments to in-home social work. So at the heart of all of that has been, how do I help people? How do I encourage other people in a way that is meaningful to them? And how do I help them meet their goals? Yeah. And I think one of my favorite things about you and that really speaks to that core is the thing I've heard you say the most is when somebody will share like one comment, your response isn't, oh, me too. And you trump them. Your response is always tell me more about that. That is my my number one, like networking, getting to know you tip is the the golden question is tell me more about that. And- it just like it sets people at ease. It shows them you're interested and it helps you connect in such a more meaningful way because like when you meet someone and you're like oh what do you do it's like so boring like who wants well if you really want to know i sit at a desk and i answer emails most of the time like riveting stuff Mm -hmm. but if somebody like you ask them like what is it about your job that you love and they say i don't know i really love helping customers meet their seo goals you say tell me more about that it's like you're getting you're getting to learn about what it is that makes SEO valuable, what it is about this person that makes them believe mm-hmm. that it's valuable. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, it just breaks down people's, like, innate hesitance to talk to a stranger. I think the other thing that I like about it is if they were just trying to give you an answer to, like, shut you down and get away from you, <laughs> when you ask that, it's the perfect bullshit meter because you'll get people who look at you like deer in headlights and like, no, thank oh. you. <laughs> You actually want to talk mm-hmm. to me. You weren't just being polite. And yeah. some people that's terrifying too. And other people are <laughs> like, oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. I thought this was just a cheesy, like, get to know you thing. But yeah, let's talk. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you become friends. Yeah. You know, who knows? The thing that I would love to hear about is how to remember people's names. So like if I'm going to dole out networking tips, because 
So I will remember the answer to tell me more about that. I will remember your dog's name. I'll remember your favorite food. I will remember where you went to vacation 10 years ago. I will not remember your name. Yeah. You saved my life. It's so embarrassing. This is great. You and I can't network together because <laughs> we'll like, talk about all who the people we met and there's zero <laughs> names. I honestly think the only way to do that is like what you see in like uh, like a TV show like Veep or like what politicians <laughs> with no with somebody following you around uh-huh. whispering in your ear. This is Caitlin. She works at Antidote Seventy One. She's a project manager and account executive. <laughs> And, and it's just like, like spring into action. Yeah, and you're like, oh, Caitlin, okay, it's so that's so nice great. Uh, so I feel like that's it. I know that there is some technology that they've been working on where like you would have your glasses would look like normal glasses that and they'd be tied to your phone the crap out and of then me. your glasses would see the your face. Your glasses are going to tell you what people's names are? The phone would go out to the internet, look them up and then oh, into your ears, Siri or somebody that's would too read. Big brother for me. Like it's really creepy, right? But it's, also like it's fascinating. Kind of helpful. But, but so like I always go down the slippery slope of like that type of facial recognition is really scary. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to like doom and gloom. That's not what this is about, but it like the flip side of it is always like, how does that go haywire? How does that go wrong? Well, and I feel like that's our industry. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, that is so cool for marketing and so terrifying for me as an industry. As a consumer. Like that's everything in what we do. Please don't do that. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, so crazy. So crazy. So some good tangents in there while we talk about tangents. That's good, too. We're already accomplishing our goals, and it's been 10 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, so I think on the tangents piece... a really good thing to point out, like we believe a great idea can come from anywhere. And sometimes a really random, stupid thing we're talking about in the office, like pays off for a client in some way or pays off for us Mm -hmm. in some way. So finding that little thing and then just like, you know, continuing to unravel it and unravel mm-hmm. it until you've got just a pile of yarn in the corner and then, but then reshaping like, what are you going to make yeah. with that? What can you do with that yeah. pile of yarn? Exactly. Yeah. I, I love the craft. So fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> crafting i love a craft cocktail yes we um, didn't actually cover what our cocktail is oh we didn't today. we were supposed to do that before in the first cocktails. segment so yes every day we'll have a cocktail and it will always be different some will be kind of average and normal and you're like oh yeah i know what that I've is and that. some will be a little further out there mm-hmm. and you may learn something and we'll post the cocktail recipe in our comments unless sure, we get good. shut down for peddling booze um is on, that a concern? i don't know I don't know, because like maybe if Google, like we, we run an ad and Google like links over there and they see that we've got a cocktail recipe. We're not selling it, though. No, we're not. We're just enabling. I think that's OK. We'll have to ask. Do Christian. we have to add like a disclaimer that like you must be 21 to consume this podcast? I don't think so. The <laughs> podcast is perfect asterisk. for anybody. <laughs> So what is our drink? drink responsibly. What is our drink today? Well, as a little segue into like more about me, uh, I opted for a Mai Tai today. My husband's name is Tyrell and he has become a craft cocktail aficionado. And I remember the first time he made us Mai Tais at home. I obviously turned it into a pun because mm-hmm. it's the perfect opportunity. So oh. I, was, I was having Mai Tais my with Mai Tai. Yeah. Yes, okay, exactly. Got it. It's a hashtag blessed and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to puke but over it was, here. I know, it's so gross. It's so gross and so annoying. But the Mai Tai is just like perfectly refreshing and citrusy and lovely. And it's like a little bit different because the Orgeau adds just another... I'm sorry, like, the Orgeau? Orgeau. It is, uh, it is almond syrup. So oh, it's okay. like, um, I had to think about it, but we got so desperate in 2020 that we made our own. Oh. So I was, I was pregnant at the time and I, Tyrell was like, I'm out of Orgeau. And I was like, well, this is a crisis. And I hid my eye roll because we were the only people that we were seeing at the time. I had to be very delicate, but we... On our next grocery order that they put in the trunk of my car, I ordered slivered almonds, and it's just like almonds. You just soak them in like alcohol. Yeah, no, not in alcohol. It's um, the steps are escaping me, but I remember like cheesecloth and boiling water. So and, like a like, simple soaking. syrup with the almonds. Yeah, yes, lots of, of sugar. That's what it is. Yeah, it was a syrup. Mm-hmm. 
but it's like, have you ever had like a Dutch letter or an almond patty? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like that, just They're in like your cherry, in your but not cherry kind of. Just that delicious, like almond sweet. Wow. Oh. Okay, yeah. so I have to back up and say when you said you know in 2020 we got desperate, and I did not think you were going to say you made your own. I thought you were going to go to, we raided the almond extract from my baking cupboard no. and used that. And I was thinking, no, oh, that sounds no, terrible. No, no, because two drops of almond extract goes very far. <laughs> and this was like, I can't remember how many packages of slivered almonds we ordered, but it was many. And then I'm just, I'm remembering like the sieve and cheesecloth and like wringing out the the liquid from... Okay the soaked almonds and the sugar all right so a good mai tai has orjo what yes. what else is in this thing uh there rum 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 so if, if we were drinking this at my house it would be overproof rum uh i'm getting some some mystery hand signals uh, we're at 20 minutes we, i think we Yep, we're at 20 minutes. So this is what you also get. You just get us <laughs> with hand signals from producers. We were Zach. worried that this wasn't going to be long He's enough, but now us. here we are. So we'll we finish the cocktail. Hearts. We'll finish the cocktail, <laughs> and then we'll get to the answers piece. Yeah. So uh, so rum, um, orjo. Yes, rum, orjo, lime, and I think they're simple. They're, you know, like anything, there are a variety of recipes, but I would encourage you to find one that speaks to you. So my problem with Mai Tais, and then we'll move on, is <laughs> I had my first ones on like an airplane to That Hawaii, is never the way to was experience a cocktail. it overly sweet and ridiculously acidic. Nobody should serve that much acid on an airplane. Oh, that's giving me heart for um, thinking about it. So I'll have to like, uh, next time we're at your place, I'll have to have uh, yeah. your Thai make me my Thai. Yes. And you will um, not be sorry. All right. So uh, we're telling, we're learning that we need to keep moving. So <laughs> answers, cocktails we covered, and then we covered it again. We circle back around tangents. We've definitely nailed that one this time. Got it under control. Um, so answers. So this is a marketing podcast, um, specifically mostly digital marketing. We'll get into some other areas and some broader design and broader marketing pieces as well. So we talked a little bit about my expertise. I run the agency. So I'm the president, CEO, benevolent dictator, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> um, I'm also the CFO, the CIO, the CTO, the all of the CEO, like it's <laughs> pretty much all of it. Um, my background is really in account service and then in those digital marketing strategies and executions and those types of things. Yeah. And so I'll jump in on that sometimes. Um, we'll probably do it one where Caitlin interviews me about something specific. Um, and then um, that'll be like a two hour. <laughs> we'll make that like a, a four part series of us just rambling. Cocktails will be part one, tangents part two, <laughs> tangents part three, and then answers part yeah. four. Um, and so I'll be doing some of the interviewing. Caitlin will also be doing some of the interviewing. Um, she's got the personality, the enthusiasm, and just... Like I said, unbridled enthusiasm and curiosity. That's all I'm bringing to this table. Yeah, I think when we said, I said, hey, I think we need to do a podcast as an agency. We've got some clients who are going to start doing them. Um, Caitlin's just immediately said, do you need a host? I can How be can a I host. Help? I love the sound of my voice. It's <laughs> Somebody wonderful. Somebody else said that. Somebody else said that. You've got, <laughs> you've got a voice for radio. I, I think it's face for radio. I have a face for I think radio. You gotta have the like the phrase. Vo- it is. But I think you've got to have the voice as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like they both have to be there. So I think that's really kind of it. So we'll have ideally an episode a week. You can kind of watch this space wherever you are. I did see... Um, one of the NPR people, I think it was Ari Shapiro, actually posted, when can we stop saying wherever you get your podcasts? Just and like, like on the internet. And I'm like, if you're listening to this, you got it from somewhere. The next one will be right where this one is like a week from now. Mm-hmm. So just whatever that is. Maybe it's like the it's like the um, like the Walter Cronkite, like nobody wanted to come up with their own sign off. So they're like, oh, that sounds good. And is a nice way to button this up and put a like put a ribbon on it and be done i could really date myself and pull in and now you know the rest of the story <laughs> um paul harvey yes paul i harvey. Really love paul harvey my, my dad, radio days no, we do not have time for that no right we now. don't um, we're getting a wrap-up <laughs> signal from uh, producer zach who's actually going to be in an episode coming up here real soon uh he does content uh management for us as well and content strategy so you'll hear about that from him at some point this season so, all right, that's it. Uh, I'm Rich Mackey. You can find me on all the social medias. You can find us on our website at antidote71.com. I'm Caitlin Dre, and the same. 
for me. You can find me on our website or on the internet somewhere. Yeah. So thanks for coming along for the ride. The next ones should be a little bit more structured, but also still loose. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks Thanks so much.